As we travel along the road to resilience, we have reviewed the history of trauma-informed care in our nation and took a brief look at the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. In this Trauma Toolbox training, we will look at the other side of toxic stress and trauma, namely resiliency. Understanding the impact trauma has had in our lives opens us up to new insights into the conditions that help survivors heal. We can use this discovery to build resiliency skills in our homes, schools, offices, and the community at large. Trauma-informed care asks us to make a paradigm shift in our thinking from what is wrong with you to what happened to you. Which question is more likely to create a defensive reaction or trigger a traumatic symptom? Which question is more likely to foster connection and create safety in a relationship? The first question, what's wrong with you, focuses on pathology within the person. It views the person as a diagnosis instead of a survivor. The second question, what happened to you, seeks a deeper understanding of the narrative that impacted the individual. It brings compassion to our interactions. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration has created six key principles for implementing a trauma-informed approach in organizations and the services they offer. Notice how safety is key principle number one. The goal of these principles is to avoid a cookie-cutter approach to trauma-informed care. They help organizations move toward a trauma-informed service delivery through the creation of, of policies and procedures that emphasize resiliency. The six principles are safety. The organization, staff, and the people they serve should feel physically and psychologically safe. Trustworthiness and transparency. Organizational operations and decisions are conducted with transparency and the goal of building and maintaining trust among staff, clients, and family members are part of those receiving services. Peer support and mutual self-help. These are integral to the organizational and service delivery approach and are understood as key vehicle for building trust, establishing safety, and empowerment. Collaboration and mutuality. This is a true partnering and leveling of power differences between staff and clients and among organizational staff from direct care staff to administrators. There is recognition that healing happens in relationships and in the meaningful sharing of power and decision making. The organization recognizes that everyone has a role to play in a trauma-informed approach. One does not have to be a therapist to be therapeutic. Empowerment, voice, and choice. Throughout the organization and among the clients served, individual strengths are recognized, built on, and validated, and new skills developed as necessary. The organization aims to strengthen the staff's, clients, and family members' experience of choice and recognize that every person's experience is unique and requires an individualized approach. This includes a belief in resiliency and in the ability of individuals, organizations, and communities to heal and promote recovery from trauma. This builds on what clients, staff, and communities have to offer rather than responding to perceived deficits. Cultural, historical, and gender issues. The organization actively moves past cultural stereotypes and biases, for example, based on race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, age, or geography. It offers gender responsive services, leverages the healing value of traditional cultural connections, and recognizes and addresses historical trauma. These principles are based on a common set of assumptions referred to as the four R's. They stand for realizing the impact trauma has on individuals, families, and the community, recognizing the signs of trauma, and when we do, respond compassionately and effectively in our practices, policies, and procedures so that we can resist re-traumatizing people we work with. There is a third question that organizations must ask themselves after making the shift from what's wrong with you to what happened to you. That question is, what does this look like? The answer will be different for each organization, but some examples might include human resource policies, that address the impact of working with people who have experienced trauma, 
the physical environment of your organization promotes a sense of safety, is calming and de-escalating for clients and staff. Strategies are used to reduce the sense of any power differential between staff and clients. Cross-sector training is developed on trauma and trauma-informed approaches and works with community partners. An individual's personal definition of emotional safety is included in treatment plans. Peer supports, family advocates, and individuals in recovery are included in the service delivery approach. A system is in place to monitor the agency's progress in being trauma-informed, and periodic evaluations are conducted. And the agency's budget reflects funding for trauma-informed trainings. Additional examples of what trauma-informed care looks like can be found in the resource section of the Trauma Toolbox.